that a ministry or a church does not just grow because the man of God is a good person or because he's a sincere person. No. Mark chapter 1. Please give us Mark chapter 1. Let's start from verse 21. Mark chapter 1. Long reading, but let's see how we can cut it. Mark chapter 1. The Bible says, speaking about Jesus now, And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue. What did he do? He taught. He taught. So you see teaching, the teaching ministry of Jesus. Next verse. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Let's keep reading. The Bible says, and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. Notice all the things that are happening here now. So we see that he taught. In the process of teaching, something about the teaching exposed a spirit that was not clean. Are you getting there now? Until the teaching of the word came, the spirit mingled with everybody. Pastor Shagun, it's good to see you. God bless you. Hallelujah. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know who thou art, the Holy One of God. Next verse. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold your peace and come out of him. So this is how to rebuke spirits. You don't rebuke spirits by counseling, by advices. You rebuke spirits by commanding their exodus out of their victim. Are we together? The Bible says, and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were amazed. So two things now we see. We see teaching and we see deliverance from the power and the dominion of evil spirits. They question among themselves saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him. Be patient. I'm showing you something now. Immediately. How long? Immediately his fame spread abroad. That means there is a way God announces what he's doing in a church and a ministry. You see the combination of the teaching ministry and the miraculous. But in order of priority, it was the teaching ministry. Not just to come around casting demons. There was perspective to that miracle. The teaching ministry, then an unclean spirit, immediately, the Bible says his fame went abroad throughout the region round about Galilee. But you would think it would stop here. Continue. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately her, the fever left her and she ministered to him. Do you know what this is? It's one thing to minister the power of God and for visitors and strangers to receive the power of God through your life. But it's another thing for those close to you to also experience that grace. This was Peter's um, mother-in-law, I think. Now imagine the, the power of that personal testimony. So this is not just some fake thing that is done outside somewhere. Even when he came home, his own disciples became benefactors of that grace also. And at evening, watch this now. When the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And the city, hallelujah, this is it here. And the city, not the village, not the community, the whole city was gathered together at the door. What did he do with them? And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases. So we see the teaching of the word captured in his ministry. We see deliverance from unclean spirits. We see healing. Of diverse kinds of sickness. Are we, are we together? He casted out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Read on please. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, 
he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Are you seeing the ingredients now? The teaching ministry there, and then deliverance, the healing ministry. Now we see priesthood captured there. The prayer ministry. You would think after such exploits, there's no need to pray again. You would be so carried away by the crowd. The Bible says, while it was morning, he got up immediately and went to a solitary place to pray. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Next verse. And Simon and they that were with him, all who are with you will follow you to where you are going. If you are going to the place of prayer, you don't tell them, go and pray. You lead them by going there yourself. This is an instruction. A principle in church growth. If you tell people fast and you don't fast, they will not follow you. They were following Jesus as he was going to pray. You must be the pace setter of your convictions. Otherwise, people will not follow you. Is someone learning now? And Simon, please go back to 36. Simon and they that were with him followed after him to go and do what he was doing. 37. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. We can stop here. So if you want to see growth and increase, you are a pastor, you have a prayer group, the secret is, is more than just producing posters. There is a place for publicity. But the real ingredients that are required is that the gospel must be preached. Doctrine must be taught or communicated. There must be a rich, a rich capture of prayer in that ministry. Are we together? And then you must give allowance for signs and wonders. Human beings will not come and waste their time around a theoretical God and keep going back to their pain, going back to their destruction. People want to experience God in His fullness. They want, after your teaching, after your preaching, they want to see a demonstration. And when I talk of demonstration, I'm not just talking of falling up and down. I'm talking about radical transformation. A collision with supernatural solutions. That someone can come and sit in an atmosphere like this. And get up and doors begin to open. Lives begin to change. You cannot run away from what works. Therefore, if you are not experiencing growth, maybe in ministry... The problem may not necessarily be the church. It may be the vessel. The first port of call is the vessel. Jesus taught. Jesus preached. Listen carefully. Jesus casted out devils. Look at how he managed fame. His fame went abroad. And yet he was able to leave that atmosphere of fame and go to pray. To build capacity. I don't know why God just put this in my heart to say it because you see, there are many people who think increase is just superstition or just about liking an individual. It's more than just liking a good preacher and it's more than being a sincere person. You may be a genuine man of God and still suffer as if God did not call you. If these ingredients are not captured in your life, there is no mystery about church growth. If you preach the gospel, if you teach the word, doctrine being your course content, if in the, at the point of teaching, God still uses you to bring deliverance to the captives, healing to the sick, and there is a rich prayer life, first your own prayer life, and then the corporate prayer life of that people, believe me, that fire will not go down. That means every time you see that there is a decline, these are the things to examine. Why should God keep sending more people if they are not being saved? There is no justification why God should send people to your church, to Koinonia, or to any other platform if souls are not being saved. Remember when a fig tree, Jesus now, had a fig tree that attracted him. He came there hungry and did not find food. What did he do to the fig tree? He caused the victory and said, fruit should not come out of you again. There is no reason why God should bring men to any life 
if the message of the gospel will not be preached. And then, if believers will not be established in doctrine, established in righteousness, to become strong, to become matured, can I tell you this? Being a baby Christian is dangerous, especially in these end times. Just saying, I am saved, is not enough. An heir, as long as he is a child, he differeth not from a slave. That means his experience will still be the experience of one who is out of the kingdom. Hallelujah. We must grow. And the only way we grow in this kingdom is through the word of God. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Are we learning? And then you must trust God for grace. Please hear me. If you are a man of God here, whether in ministry already or God is calling you, can I tell you, among the many things you pray for is the grace for the supernatural. You ignore the supernatural, get ready for empty pews. End time ministry is a ministry of power. Power that is replicable again and again. It is not just the excellency of speech. Power to bring changes to people's lives. Power to bring supernatural solutions. Power to ward off the arsenals of darkness. Most people have done well in terms of learning scripture. But there is a, a gross deficiency of the authentic power of the Holy Ghost in their lives. Nobody will come and sit down and waste their time and waste their destiny before you if there is no demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because can I tell you, for everyone seated here listening to me, there are yokes and burdens. You cannot begin to imagine the problems that people shelve away just to pay attention to Jesus. And if you are advocating and marketing a loving and benevolent Jesus, somewhere in your sermon, somewhere in your church service there must be an opportunity for the Holy Ghost to reveal the love of Jesus to the people while he was teaching there was a man possessed of an unclean spirit and there was something powerful about the doctrine he was communicated it was too hot for those spirits they couldn't keep quiet and Jesus casted those spirits out when he did all of that they brought more people for him that is the, the reward you get for demonstrating the power of God. God honors you with more people, but with more people will come a need for greater solutions. So he went to pray to increase capacity again. Hallelujah. Are we learning? So next time anybody asks you what is the key to church growth, there is no superstition about it. It's not just an issue of location. It's not just an issue of geography. When there is the preaching of the gospel, the teaching of the word, a demonstration of the reality of the life and the power of Jesus, a solid, stable, ever-increasing priesthood ministry of prayer, you have found the ingredients that make for growth. Are we together now? Philippians chapter 4 verse 9. Let's talk on a few things. I don't know how many things I'll talk about tonight. But wherever we stop, 